What's up guys? How's it going? Hope you guys are all awesome. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a working demonstration on transformers. I'm going to be stepping up and stepping down some voltages over a long distance. In this video here, I'm going to keep things simple. I'm not going to get into too much detail. I'm not going to be talking about electrons and dipoles and domains and all that stuff and eddy currents. So we'll just stick with the basics of the transformer, how it works, and what kind of current you need to actually make it work. I have these poles set up and I've attached some thin wire to it. It's about a 22 gauge wire. And you can see that the poles go all the way over there. So the wires travel along these poles here and they end up over here. It's about a couple hundred feet away from where I'll be attaching the source voltage to these two wires over here. So this is just a demonstration and we can see what kind of current we get down at the other end with this very thin wire. So I'm gonna attach some power sources to this wire here. Okay, so I'm at the start end here and I have a battery hooked up to the little wires, the little thin wires that go all the way over to our pole that's over there. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you the voltage now, 12.4 volts. So I'll take the motor here, this is a 12 volt motor. This is only low voltage, so don't get too concerned. And we can see that we can easily power up the motor on this end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down to the other end and we're gonna see if we can power up this motor with this very, very thin wire that runs a couple hundred feet. At the other end now, you can see there's the battery and I'm up here, it's about a couple hundred feet away. So I'll attach the wires to the motor and we'll see what happens. Oh, look at how slow it's turning. Well, that's to be expected because we have such a long distance and we're using a direct current. So I have a halogen bulb here. It says it's 51 watts, 12 volts. So we'll attach that to the battery. See, it lights up brightly. Now I'm gonna run down to the other end. Oh. So you can see that it lights up very dimly this end. I have a 12 amp heat gun and a 300 watt spotlight hooked up. So I don't think the heat gun's actually turning on, but you can see how dim the bulb is now. It's very dim. So we can't get much current down at that end with only 120 volts at this end. So what we need to do is step up the voltage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up these transformers here and I'm gonna hook them up so that I'm going to step up the 120 volts down here to a few thousand volts. And then I'm gonna send it through the wire and then I'm gonna step it back down. The transformer's hooked up. This one's gonna step up the voltage and then the transformer on that end is gonna step down the voltage. I have the 300 watt spotlight hooked up to the transformer and I'm gonna plug it in remotely. I'm not gonna be anywhere around here, so. So now I have the spotlight and the 12 amp heat gun hooked up to the step down transformer on that end. So I'm gonna plug it in and we're gonna see how it works. Okay, so we're gonna So by stepping up the voltage from that end and then stepping it down at this end, we can now power the 300 watt spotlight and the 12 amp heat gun through this very thin wire. So basically when you step up and you step down, when you step up a voltage, the current goes down. When you step down a voltage, the current goes up. So it's always proportional. You're not gaining any energy and you're not losing uh, much energy. So basically you're just stepping up a voltage that lowers the current and then you step down a voltage that increases the current. Higher voltage you can then move or transmit the energy a lot farther than you could with a lower voltage and also the conductor size. So the higher the voltage, we can, you can pump a very high voltage through a thinner wire and then you can step it down on the other end. So you'll find transformers in many different things like from electronics to battery chargers, welders, and I'll just show you. This one is a step down transformer. This one here was a two amp battery charger and you can see this was inside of a clock radio. And we have another step down transformer out of a printer. 
we have a homemade step-down transformer. This was a microwave oven transformer that I converted to. And then we have our battery charger transformer here. You can take a look at the battery charger transformer here. This is a step-down transformer. We can see that this is the primary. It has many turns of thin wire. And then this one is the secondary, which has less turns of heavy wire. So these are the wires that, that run the battery charger, and this is your 120 volts going into the transformer. So we can take a look at the microwave oven transformer here. Now this one is a step-up transformer, and you can see this is the primary, very thick windings, and this is where your 120 volts would go in to this transformer. And this is the secondary, which is the high voltage, very thin wire, lots and lots of turns. So basically the transformer is made up a few different parts. We have our core, iron core, and we have our primary or secondary coil, which is then inserted into the core. So we step up voltages because we want to have less current and be able to use thinner conductors. So we, then we can transmit the or move the electrical current easier instead of having very, very heavy wires to be able to, to accept the amount of current that we can put through them. So that's why we step up voltages. And then when we come to our house, we step them down again to a workable voltage of let's say 120 volts or 240 volts. So with the 120 volts that comes into your home, we still can't use that for electronics, like this old clock radio here. So we need to step the voltage down again. So like this old clock radio here, we have a small step-down transformer. This steps the voltage down to, let's say, 9 volts, a more workable voltage. And then we rectify the voltage to a direct current, and then the direct current is used for our electronics in here. So that's why we have to step up and step down voltages. So without alternating current or pulsating DC current, the transformer will not function. And I'll show you that in a minute. So transformers work by electromagnetic induction and they work on alternating current or they'll work on a pulsating direct current. Now this DC current, this line here is representing a battery. So by attaching a battery to a transformer, the transformer will not function unless you have a pulsating DC current like this one here, which uses electronics to actually turn the DC current on and off. So to look at transformers on paper here, we can see that this one is a step down transformer. We have our primary winding, which is longer and more turns. And then we have our secondary, which is a thicker wire with less turns. And for the step up, we have a thicker wire here on the primary and a thinner wire here on the secondary. First thing we need to talk about is induction. And you may have seen the copper pipe and the magnet demonstration, but if you haven't, then I'll show it here. Basically, we're going to take a magnet and we're going to drop it. And we're going to see how long it takes to get to the ground. So you can see that it drops very quickly. Now, if we take that magnet and we drop it through this copper pipe here, let's see what happens when we do that. Now, you can see that it takes quite a long time for the magnet to actually get down the pipe. And it's not because of the magnet touching against the pipe or any resistance. So when we drop the magnet through the pipe, induction is taking place. So an electrical current is actually being produced inside of this copper pipe and the opposing force is slowing down the magnet and we call that Lenz law. A demonstration here on induction, I have a speaker magnet here, a powerful speaker magnet, and I have a coil of wire. So let's see what happens when I place the coil of wire over top of the magnet. Now you can see that a current was produced. Now if I pull the magnet away, a current is produced in the opposite direction. So if I move the coil up, you can see a current being produced in one direction. Drop the coil down, current produced in the other direction. So without movement, induction will not take place and a current will not be produced. So there always has to be a changing magnetic field. So I have a transformer here which has been taken apart so the core is exposed. I can apply a low voltage AC to this 
transformer here, and then we can move this coil into the changing electromagnetic field, and then we can see what happens. We're going to set the meter to AC. We'll put it on the 50 volts because we really don't know what the voltage we're going to get. And I'm going to turn this on. So to set a good example for safety, I'm going to put on my linesman gloves. And these are very, very heavy rubber gloves that are used for working on power lines. And so I'm going to turn this on now. So with this turned on and we take these wire cutters here, we can see that we have ourselves an electromagnet. The field. And so you can see that now a current is being induced. And change the voltage here. 10 volts here. Way too. We'll plug it in. And there you go. If I remove the coil from the changing magnetic field, if we look at the meter, induction stops. You can think of it this way as we have an electromagnet here with a changing magnetic field and then when we drop this coil on top, this coil is the one that's going to be induced. So induction is going to take place in this coil. So this one's electromagnet, this one is going to then be our induction coil. So if we take this piece of iron here and you can see that it's not a magnet and we place it over top of the core, watch what happens. Voltage is going up. So I have a 12 volt battery over there and I'm going to attach 12 volts direct current to this and we're going to see what happens. You can see the needle jumps forward and then I'm going to disconnect. You can see the needle jumps backwards, forward, backwards. Let's put this piece of iron on here so we can get a better look at it. So we're going to then turn it on, see the needle jump and disconnect. So when we disconnect, we have a collapsing magnetic field. And now it collapsed. And with this meter here, we can't see what's going on, but the, the, the needle will jump as far forward as it will jump backwards. So there's energy stored in the coil. And when it collapses, the needle jumps backwards. We turn this on and off very quickly. Let's see what happens. We can see that we can make the transformer operate. Pulsating direct current, you can then make a transformer work. So basically you're turning it on and then off, on, off, on, off, on, off, like that. And alternating current works very similar and that's why we can then use a transformer to step up and step down voltages. So if we just attach direct current, then the transformer will not function. But if we attach an alternating current or we attach a pulsating DC current, then we can make the transformer operate. So that was just a working demonstration on transformers. This video is just intended for entertainment purposes only. Do not try anything you see in these videos and stay awesome. Thanks for watching. Bye.